Hi, in this video, I'll show you some good workflow techniques for the Hoffa IQ Comp. Along with EQing, compression is one of the most important utilities in modern music production. The compressor's fundamental basic parameters like threshold, ratio, attack, and release time can be set here. Furthermore, you can switch between calm and rough mode. The calm mode is a musically sounding bus compression with adaptive behavior. That means that the attack and release times are influenced by the input. This effect is less pronounced in the substantially harder sounding rough mode. Here is the calm mode again. Here you can find the flavor mode. That is a tone control mode which is linked to the compression. This is the compressor being applied to the vocal track. As you can see, something is being compressed here already. Now I'm turning on the flavor mode with the preset warm and setting the amount here. This preset adds low frequencies in relation to the gain reduction while high frequencies are reduced, so the compression sounds warm. Let's get to the snare drum, which is not establishing itself very well in the mix. As you can hear, it sounds rather dull and lacks punch. Therefore, I choose a slightly longer attack time in the rough mode to give the snare the needed punch. Now, when I switch the flavor mode to expert, the flavor settings can be edited manually. Here you can choose from three different filters, with which you can adjust frequency, Q factor, and amount. For this snare drum, I use a low shelf filter at about 400 Hz with negative amount. When the compressor reduces gain, this frequency range is lowered as well. I combine this with a high shelf filter to add treble. Also important in this context is the AHEAD function. It makes sure that the tonal adjustments start working before the actual punch occurs. This dynamic frequency expansion allows you, for example, to make your real snare drum recordings clearer and more forceful without unintended lifting of the hi-hat crosstalk on the same track. Here is the previous once again and after. Let's continue with the bus compression. Here I choose the COM mode with proper values for attack and release. It becomes clear that the compression is very strongly controlled by the energy-rich bass drum. Thus the mix starts pumping. To counter this, I use the internal sidechain filter. Here I'm able to adjust the precise points to which the compressor will react. To make sure that the bass drum doesn't dominate the compression, I choose a low shelf and lower the bass below about 400 Hz. Again, I don't lower the output signal itself, but only the signal that controls the compressor. An additional feature is the clipper, which can help in reaching maximum loudness during the mastering process. A clipper actually works similarly to a limiter with the difference being that marginal additional distortions may occur, but transients are altered much less. The clipper works with up to 64 times oversampling to avoid disturbing aliasing. Here you can edit the clipper's threshold, as well as seeing how strongly it influences the signal. In conclusion, I want to demonstrate for you the option of MS compression. By using the MS mode, your side signal can be edited without affecting the mono center. So in this mode, there are two independent compressors. Using the compression on this group track, I've stabilized the side signal. <laughs> Using IQ Comp as an all-around production tool, 
There won't be any limits to your creativity.